six significant earthquakes in just 35 days. That's the number scientists are analyzing with extreme attention in the Western Pacific between December 2025 and January 2026. And when you understand the pattern behind these numbers, the situation becomes much clearer. We're talking about a sequence that began on December 8th, with a magnitude 7.5 earthquake in northeastern Japan, leaving more than 40 people injured, and it simply didn't stop. Twelve days later, another magnitude 6.7 tremor shook the northern part of the country, followed by tsunami waves that hit the coast. Then came the December 21st earthquake in Aomori, with magnitude 5.4 and four significant aftershocks in the following days. Think about this for a second. Three significant seismic events in just 13 days in the same region. But here's where it gets more interesting. When the calendar turned to 2026, the activity didn't decrease. On January 6th, Shimane Prefecture in western Japan recorded a magnitude 6.2 earthquake, accompanied by four aftershocks in sequence, including one of magnitude 5.4. 24 hours later, the Philippines felt a magnitude 6.4 tremor on the island of Mindanao. And three days later, Indonesia was struck by another magnitude 6.4 earthquake. This one even generating a tsunami warning for coastal regions. Now, you might be thinking that earthquakes are common in this part of the world, and you're absolutely right. The Western Pacific registers about 1,500 tremors per year in Japan alone. But the issue isn't the quantity. It's the pattern and intensity concentrated in such a short period. According to data from the United States Geological Survey, this frequency of events above magnitude 6 in less than 40 days represents something statistically unusual, even for one of the most seismic regions on the planet. And there's a detail that caught my attention while analyzing this data. Right after the December 8th earthquake, Japanese authorities did something that has only happened twice in history they issued a special megaquake warning for the Nankai Trough. Let me explain what this means and why scientists around the world are paying attention. The Nankai Trough is a subduction zone approximately 500 miles, 800 kilometers long, that runs parallel to the southern coast of Japan. Think of a gigantic underwater trench where the Philippine Sea tectonic plate is slowly diving beneath the continental plate where Japan sits. This meeting between plates isn't peaceful. Each year, the plates move a few inches, several centimeters, accumulating an absurd amount of energy, and when that energy is released all at once, what geologists call a megaquake happens. We're not talking about a common tremor. Historical records show that the Nankai Trough produces devastating earthquakes every 100 to 150 years. The last major event occurred in 1946, meaning almost 80 years have already passed. In September 2025, Japan's earthquake investigation panel released a number that left many people on alert there's a 60 to 90% probability that a megaquake will strike the region in the next 30 years. Notice this. It's not a question of if it will happen, but when. The Japanese government estimates that a magnitude 8 to 9 earthquake in this zone, followed by a tsunami, could result in the loss of up to 298,000 lives and cause damages of $2 trillion. To get an idea of the scale, this is equivalent to approximately 5% of Japan's gross domestic product, disappearing in a matter of minutes. The country's most populous cities, Tokyo, Osaka, Nagoya, are all within the potential impact zone of this event. The thing is, the recent December and January earthquakes may be connected to this larger scenario. Not that they're necessarily direct precursors to the major event, but they're part of an interconnected tectonic system that spans the entire Western Pacific. When studying recent publications on the subject, it becomes evident that there's an intense debate in the scientific community about the ability to predict earthquakes. Professor Robert Geller from the University of Tokyo was quite direct when commenting on the megaquake warning issued in August 2024, stating that the measure had little scientific basis. According to him, it's not possible to determine in advance whether an earthquake is a foreshock or an aftershock. On the other hand, Seismologists Judith Hubbard and Kyle Bradley point out that only about 5% of earthquakes are preceded by foreshocks. But the devastating 2011 earthquake in Japan was exactly one of those cases. It had a magnitude 7.2 tremor that was largely ignored before the main magnitude 9 event. And here's the crucial point. Even with all modern technology, real-time monitoring systems, and decades of study, science still cannot predict earthquakes with precision. 
What scientists can do is identify risk patterns in zones of higher probability. Japan experiences approximately 1,500 tremors annually, most causing no damage. But in the last 45 days, the intensity and frequency of events has risen considerably. The Philippines and Indonesia also recorded above normal activity. All three countries are in the Pacific Ring of Fire, a horseshoe-shaped band over 25,000 miles, 40,000 kilometers long, where about 80% of the world's earthquakes occur. This region concentrates more than 450 active volcanoes and the planet's most dynamic subduction zones. So what does all this mean for those living in these regions? I'll be direct. It's a situation that requires serious attention, but not panic. The fundamental difference between Japan and many other countries is preparation. After the 2011 earthquake, which had a magnitude of 9.0 and generated a tsunami that resulted in the loss of approximately 18,500 lives, the country invested heavily in anti-seismic infrastructure and warning systems. Today, Japan has the world's densest seismic monitoring network. When an earthquake is detected, algorithms instantly calculate the magnitude and location, triggering automatic alerts via cell phone seconds before the strongest seismic waves arrive. It may seem like little time, but those seconds save lives. They allow high-speed trains to reduce speed, people to take shelter, and gas systems to be automatically shut off. Buildings follow extremely strict codes. Structures are designed to sway, not to break. Evacuation drills happen regularly in schools and businesses. I'll continue to closely monitor this situation because the pattern observed between December and January deserves continued attention. If you are as fascinated as I am by these invisible forces that shape our planet, subscribe to the channel. Every week I bring analyses based on official data from the United States Geological Survey, Japanese Institutes, and verified scientific sources. Turn on notifications to follow any significant developments. And if you know someone who lives in a seismic area or plans to travel to Japan, the Philippines, or Indonesia, share this video. Knowledge about preparation can make all the difference when the Earth decides to move.